Tommy Winata, one of Indonesia's most powerful and wealthiest businessmen. He rarely gives interviews. When he does, his pet topic, the rescue of endangered tigers, a conservation effort in the southern tip of Sumatra that has made news across the globe. So in our conversation, we sought to find out more about the businessman who had attracted more controversy than accolades over the years. I only try to do everything when I get the opportunity to make it complete and as good as I can do. I always think how to develop and make the project become 110% complete. Renata came from humble beginnings and had a tough childhood. He dropped out of school and later worked for a logistics packing firm to support his family. I only look when my parents have failed in the business. Actually, as a young boy, I feel cannot accept it. So I try to look for the job opportunity to find the money. From the age of 15, his strong will to survive took him to jobs in West Kalimantan, Irian Jaya and Sulawesi. I learning by doing whatever the order have been given by my boss and my senior, whatever they give me the job and opportunity to, to doing the job, I try to do it hard. So it was hard work all the way? Yeah, hard work. And I never stop as long as I never finish my job become offered the target. I meet a lot of the friends, some of them come from the army background. So, and then on this time, we side by side become a friend. Your first big break came when the Army Controlled Foundation took over a small local bank, mm -hmm. Bank Proper Lot, mm -hmm. today called Bank Adagraha, mm -hmm. and asked you to manage the financial institution. Yes. How much of your fortune today is linked to your powerful connections with the military? After I coming back to Jakarta, on this time the Army Foundation called Isi Ayasan uh, Siliwangi in the West Java. The, uh, they have the problem in the financial uh, problem with their bank propeller. And then they make a report to the chief of the Army staff. This Army Foundation is only to take care of the poor Army family. So on that time one of the Army leaders on this time they asked me to do and helping the bank propellant or because on that time the total asset only one million dollar but have the financial problem also when i try to help and i agree to help i look it's not good but in one and a half years winata turned it around today that bank is now called the Arthur Graha bank or yes. bank Arthur Graha. yes you bank. still continue to have close business links with the military What's uh, it like having the military as a corporate partner? Are they demanding? What sort of investment returns no, like do this, they look uh, at? On that time, almost 60% of the country leader is come, the background is from the army. Because all the professional, almost, almost all of the professional and almost some of the leader, the background is army. And some of them, I know them from the, when I was in, in the East Indonesia on the, all the, in the Kalimantan. So from this, we try to work together in our normal connection with the government. Mm -hmm. But the government official, hiring official, the background is from the army. Mm -hmm. So look like I tighten up with the army directly. And then suddenly, we talk about the army foundation bank. Mm -hmm. So outside people look like, oh, this is maybe a business with the army business. Mm, but but actually, not. everybody can do the business was the same when I'm doing business. Because I'm not become directly become an army supplier, mm -hmm. except I do some contract to the army for the middle and low, low, low housing for the lowering of the army for official. So today, what sort of relationship do you have with the army? We have the normal relationship as same as the, the other businessmen, again, because uh, now in Indonesia, army is still one of the important institutions to protect the country from the any illegal thing except the, again the constitution. Because of your links with the army, have you been able to get access to some very important projects in the country? Uh, no, uh, especially today, because, uh, we cannot make any business, especially in the civil area, because of the connection with the army. We must come to the normal procedure with the uh, with the, with the civilian leader, 
and then some of the army if now if they come to the become the civil uh, official they must retire from the army mm. so everything must go by the rule so everything is above board yes so you don't get preferential treatment no any preferential official we get it's normal for sure we go Renata got another big break when he took over the publicly listed Jakarta International Hotel development, the vehicle that would become one of the largest listed real estate holding companies in Indonesia. Today, Renata runs his diverse businesses under the Arthur Graha Group, from banking to mining to agriculture. We only want to tell to the world, especially in ASEAN, Jakarta is not a big village. Jakarta become a new Manhattan. You think you've achieved that goal? Yes, I believe now already like a Manhattan in Jakarta. And then I think after we can complete all the development, this is become all the, the most one, the best area in ASEAN country. In that same business district, you now want to build Signature Tower, yes. which will cost you something like $2 billion to build. When completed, mm. it will be the tallest building in Indonesia and the fifth tallest tower in the world. Yeah. Why such an ambitious project? Are you trying to create a name for yourself in the international scene? No, I want to create, this is Indonesia can. Indonesia and, can. And Jakarta do it. Mm. And Jakarta give me chance to do it. Mm. That is style that to the to the everybody in the world. Jakarta is really coming up, become an important player in the, the whole world of the capital city. Jakarta growth is become Indonesian growth. I want Indonesia to become the most important player in the world. Up next, we ask Indonesian businessman Tommy Renata about the progress of the controversial Sunda Strait Bridge, the country's largest infrastructure project. Managing Asia will be right back. Welcome back to Managing Asia. My guest today is Tommy Winata, a well-known figure in Indonesia and the man behind the Arthur Graha Group. You're one of Indonesia's most well-connected and powerful businessmen, but your reputation is not without controversy. Mm -hmm. What business practices and values do you live by? The main target is not the profit. When I look at the one business opportunity, is my business can helping the government is number. After that, can the effect of my business can grow for the local and surrounding people, economic and good thing for them. And after that, of course, can 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 it can I do it also not again the environment. After that, if there is still a profit, this become of the my fifth target. Mm. So you would actually take on a project even if it doesn't make money for you? Yes. Why? If one anti four can... Why be so noble? No, I am not as noble. Because for me, as I want to be a success, I hope in the day of my last day, I, at least I already can feed three million of the head family. Maybe I a little bit different with the other businessmen. They think they have success after they get $100 billion. For me, the amount of the human, of the people, can grow together, become part of my business development, is more important than the profit itself. The profit is only enough it can serve the financing risk mm. or the financing cost. And then the profit come to my pocket is become number five after all the things can be done. You're a powerful, a very powerful businessman in Indonesia. Do you always get what you want in terms of projects? Uh, the meaning of just now, uh, you say about powerful and very powerful. The powerful and very powerful in what area? In terms of mind, the powerful and very powerful, maybe, maybe, if I use your word, is how to care of and serve to the people. And then, grow together with the people surrounding us and surrounding in my business. After my business can be very useful for the surrounding poor people, then they will protect my business and my picture become secure. And then after that, they, they think 
that me and my business become part of their future. So they will protect our business, become the, like the social security belt. Mm. So this is the meaning of me by the, the, the what is just now you say about the powerful. So don't think about powerful with the good connection, with the high rank or the, with, the, with the special connection with the government. Like many developing countries, Indonesia has been well known for its graft and corruption. Yeah. How do you deal with something so sensitive while at the same time trying to get business done in a country? Uh, regarding of the corruption, I don't know. I only heard about corruption, but in my business, I try to avoid of this kind of deal. How do you avoid it? Uh, because I don't know what is the. Co I I believe everybody become one become a leader in Indonesia. They must get a support of the government. Maybe with me, they're not looking my money. Maybe they're looking for the, for try to get the sympathy from me, and then I will tell to my to the people who who always together with me. To support their target to become a politician or to be the government official, a lot of them still very clean. But sorry, the past always come with the official who make a corruption, come to the media very hot. So look like everybody like corrupt. Mm. Actually, I believe the the corrupt of official in Indonesia at least I think is not more than one person. But how do you deal with corruption if you encounter it? As a businessman, what do you do? Next time, if I have this experience, I will let you know. <laughs> I have not the experience. Again, again. Because I always come my proposal, Excellency, sir, if, you, if I can get this opportunity, the, the people will be do like this, the poor, the I will do. I will give to the our Sierra how much. I will care to the forest how much. I will care to the environment how much. I will give opportunity to the medium small businessmen and uh, retail sector how much. So this I give the proposal. How if you help me, it mean you help one million people. If you help me, it mean you help three million people in the future. I always come with this approach. So maybe they think it's fair if they can helping me to do. This some opportunity of the project. So you've never had to give bribes as a businessman? I'm not feel very hard about when I come to the approaching with the, my official government. You've been linked to many high profile projects and one of them is the Sunda Strait Bridge. When completed, it will be the longest yes. in the country. Have you been given the final go ahead to carry out what will be the country's single largest infrastructure project? The project itself in Indonesia I call it non-recourse financing. The project I proposed to the government from 2004. On this time, the government think there is no budget to develop this project. I say, if you give me concession with a certain years, maybe I try to bring the project become non-recourse financing. And it means the B2B project. And why I think about this project? Because the project is connecting Sumatra and Java Island. Mm. It's almost 80% of the national growth and national people, uh, and then of the, the population, about 80% of the population also in this area. I only think, I look at the logistic and the, and the agriculture logistic come to Java, and then industry come to Sumatra. This is always become very expensive uh, logistic cost. Mm. And then the product become very expensive, and the people will be purchased with a more high price. Mm. Because to cross this street, at least they need one day, sometimes seven days. Mm. The fastest can they cross this bridge is nine hours. So if this bridge can be this bridge can be developed, at least I think the time to delivery time to cross the bridge shorter. only two hours maximum. Mm. What's behind the delay? What's behind the delay in you getting the final approval? Until now, I not yet get the right to develop this project because the government still the finalization of the re, of the study in the part of the government. And the project, if if and one time, if one day government give it the opportunity to us, the project financing must come from the private sector without any guarantee from the government. Yes. Because I don't want to interrupt the balancing of the budget of the country from sure. between West and the East Park. 
and I believe if the project can be grown and can be developed, you know, the 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 supporting area between two new city will be built in the starting and finishing of the uh, of the bridge will be will be contribute of the payment of the bridge development cost. You confident of getting the project? I think I very confident. How long will it take to build the bridge? The width of the bridge is about 10 years. What other projects are you eyeing? What other mega projects out there are you eyeing besides the bridge? Is there anything else that you're looking to secure? Indonesia still a lot of opportunity. Like what? Maybe I put my dream to connect it one by one of any island in Indonesia. Really? Yes. How many bridges will there be? Jawa, Sumatra, one. Sumatra, go to Bangka, Blitung, and Kalimantan, one. This already three. Kalimantan in Nunukan, go to the North Sulawesi, one. From North Sulawesi, go to the Ternate, Halmahera, one. So we can connect mm. I put my dream as high as I can. <laughs> and then also one other thing I must let you know. In the history of Indonesia, when the Dutch time, yeah, in the Jaka, uh, Jawa Highway is made, is developed from the Anyer in the Banten, go to the Panarukan. Mm. Until today, we not yet break the history. So in the Sunda Strait, I want from Anyer, go to Lampung. So you want to make history? I want Indonesia to make history. Don't go away. Up next, Indonesian businessman Tommy Renata talks about his efforts to save Sumatran tigers. Managing Asia will be right back. In the southern tip of Sumatra, Indonesia, Tommy Winata has created his own paradise, a conservation park to protect the environment and endangered tigers. My target is how to take care of the environment. Maybe as a human, as a businessman also, every businessman in the world, after they become a billionaire, how much of them spend their profit to, to pay back to save the environmental, to save the earth, and to save the wildlife. The Tumbling Nature Wildlife Conservation houses a tiger rescue center that has been called by some as unorthodox and controversial in its approach to protecting the animal. You're trying to reform and reintroduce conflict tigers back into the wild. Now these tigers have actually attacked or killed humans before. What assurance can you give villagers yeah. that these tigers won't harm them again? Yeah, tiger is one of the, the eco uh, cyclus. If tiger one day in Indonesia finish, there's a lot of effective imbalance of the ecosystem will be happening. And maybe, and for sure will be again the other, the other of the uh, cyclus of the environment. So because maybe overpopulation of the pig, operation of the other lot of animal mm -hmm. in balance. And then this animal will be again the agriculture and again a lot of things. How many conflict tigers have you brought back to the wild? Eight. Five of them already back to the nature. And you're confident they won't attack humans again? Until the first day I released them. Until today already four years. And every month five days at least five days I'm in this forest and conservation. Mm. You look, I see in front of you. Mm. And maybe hundreds of the people, local people surrounding them, have no evidence they have been attacked by the, the tiger what had been released back to the nature by mm. us. How exactly do you reform tigers? Oh, I, I rehab them in the rehab area. Tiger actually is afraid with the human. The human come to the forest, doing the illegal mining, illegal logging, and a lot of illegal things in the forest. Because the tiger skin, very expensive in the market. So they also hunting the tiger. The tiger actually is avoid the, the human. In the, our rehabilitation center, we make a new atmosphere for him. Let them uh, eat the, the nature food that they can find in the forest, like pig, wild boar, uh, deer, whatever. So after six, eight months, we look, we look, they're already very, very keen to eat the pig. 
of course we also ask the scientists mm. from Taman Safari helping me because I'm not the tiger scientist. Sure. Also I have I get a help uh, helping and advice from the Alan Robinowik from the Pantera in the US mm. to teach me how to look the tiger already. So you're actually confident that you can actually reform and rehabilitate yeah. a conflict tiger. Yeah. You're confident. Yes, I'm confident. And for for your knowing. Until today, I already seven times meet a tiger in the wild. You yourself, face yes. to face. And the nearest only four meter. After they look at me, and I'm not doing anything, they turn off the, the hat and go. You have a great rags to riches story. As a school dropout, you're now one of Indonesia's most powerful and well-connected businessmen. What advice would you give others on how to do well in business? My advice to my all of my friends, if you say I'm success, is please do it as good as you can do it. Don't put our interest at front. Put our interest after the whole thing become over target, completely by over target. This is my advice and my target to myself and to everybody. So put yourself last? Yes. Is that I always put my, inter my personal interest become the last, the last part. You have quite a reputation in the business circle. Some people respect you, some people fear you. What is Tommy Winata really like in person? What are you like, sir? What drives you? What motivates you? When I start my business and coming up, my project become big. Maybe some of them is, how come this Tommy Winata without no background, no family, mm. actually very poor, suddenly can come to this level? And then they try to to build up a lot of humor. Maybe they make money from A, from B, from C, a lot of the bad comment. But until today, no any single thing, have, the bad thing have been done by me. A lot of the rumor come. One is my big fault, is I never care about this issue. As long as they not directly attack me, I avoid and I do my job and I do my project. So, after maybe slow and sure, the image become there because I never think to clean it for because they talk. Okay. Let them talk lah. We just do it. We just do it. But now in the information era like this, very instant. Uh, I just know last time I do wrong because I must try to explain to the people that what is they say thing bad thing about me. I must explain to them. And finally, you've built quite an empire for yourself. Arthur Graha Group now consists of something like 14 subsidiaries operating in various businesses from infrastructure, property, banking, telecommunications, agribusiness. What vision have you laid up for the group? What empire do you want to create in your lifetime? I not think to build the empire. I only think, I only think all of my business have been built now, can grow happily and properly. And the target of the growth is how can bring and grow for the people, to the people surrounding us. Everywhere in my branches, everywhere in the Atagraha network, I say at least five kilometers surrounding there, we must care for the middle, low businessmen and the poor people. So my target is not empowering. My target, how Atagraha network and Atagraha group become CSR and serving the poor people, serve the job for the 3 million type of money. This is my target. And that was Indonesian businessman Tommy Renata behind the Arthur Graha group of companies. Hope you've enjoyed this program. Join us again next week for more on the challenges of managing Asia.